Yeah, that's quick. Sub phone fans. Room from me all over with you today. I bought a thing. A few weeks ago. I had my zinc hardware kit delivered. And you know what? I have zero regrets on it. I've been playing with it for mm, maybe a week now and absolutely loving every second with it. This thing is beautifully well put together. Now, I ordered in the dev kit straight from 118 Industries. Those guys are freaking awesome. I'll leave a link for them in the, uh, in the description. And I tell you, the dev kit, worth it. If you can get your hands on it, I recommend ordering early and actually getting the dev kit shipped out to you. You get pretty much everything in this, what I assume will be the standard kit. Two barrels, short barrel, I've got the long barrel installed. You get a length of K25 and a length of 788, which I don't have a lot of experience with, so I can't exactly tell you the uh, equivalencies and whatnot. I know K25 slightly weaker than our C836 from Bunnings, you know, Australian hardware and all that. I guess start with the one thing I was wondering about. Power levels. Now, running it through my Satinus Crony with the long barrel on the 788 installed, I'm getting dead on 129, 120 ish. The ergonomics of the thing are absolutely spectacular. Grip is probably one of the smallest mag and handle type grips I've seen. I've had a few mag and handle type blasters. I mean, I have a pigeon. I've had a number of different mag and handle type blasters in my hands, and this fits perfectly. The tail end under where your thumb rests sits exactly in the webbing of my thumb. There's absolutely no bite when you slam it back in home, which I have a tendency to do. Uh, yeah, I have zero complaints on it. Through testing, through messing around with it, through, you know, just putting it through its paces, I found my most comfortable grip is to simply hold, standard, fold my hand up, around the slide, and from there I can open it up really easily, shut it again and be back to firing position. The weight balance in it is exactly what I expect. It sits a little forward of the trigger guard, but with a two-hand brace it feels like nothing. It's just beautifully weighted, really well presented. Uh, I think I printed this well, I'll get to that when I actually get down to the uh, printing tips and all that. Going through the hardware for it, running a checklist as I do with every build, I found the two pins for the handle, because if you're printing this on a smaller printer, you will need to print the two-piece frame. I printed two-piece frame as it was and all that, went looking for the pins, <laughs> and yeah. I, they just weren't in there. And everything's in its own little bag, so I assume they're all assembled by hand. Uh, by no means is this a dig at the, guy, at the guys who assemble all this. It's just an oversight. Myself, I went down to my local hobby shop, found 2mm music wire, fit precisely exactly as I needed it. A few tips if you decide to get one of these. and. If you're after a decently powerful, well-balanced, well-weighted sidearm, or even, I actually intend to run this as a primary for a few matches, I can't recommend it enough. If you do intend to run it with the higher spring load, the K25, I wholly recommend you print the T-Pull. 
I could not actually lock it into the catch. Uh, maybe once or twice I got the catch to lock. It's a hell of a spring considering the size and the forces you're working against. On my print bed right now is the T-pull rear and the T-pull itself, which you do get included hardware for. I wholly recommend printing the tolerance guide as well. You order one, hold off on actually printing any of the parts until you receive the tolerance guide. I have an end of three. And I love it. But, as I found out, it has a tendency to print things a little small. Tolerance guide Basically, you print it out, it's just a block, three holes in it. The build or print guide, one of the two provided, uh, that has a guide in it that tells you which barrel fit will give you which prints. The three is the oversize and just slides right through. So yeah. Apparently, undersized for mine, which led to a few things I had to refine. I basically had to sand out the inside of the mag well, I had to sand the mags down themselves. If you actually see this in person, I mean, you can see it with the light shining off of this few dull spots. I haven't actually sanded down this side yet. The followers and the inside of the magazines. Both required a bit of sanding. And here's where we get to the actual sanding tips and what I would recommend you avoid. Magazine release. This thing is pretty small and it fits in very, very tightly. It goes in right under the trigger. Uh, guard, which, yes, I have snapped, I realize this. When I put it in the first time, it was... It just would not move. So sanding off the sides of that until they're almost smooth, and sanding the inside where it rests, definitely recommend it. The underside of the turnaround, the pusher. Doing that upside down is awkward. The underside all the way up to roughly here on mine is sanded, as is the groove it sits in. I recommend it for the fact that it binds on itself a little, regardless of which direction your print lines go. For ease of use, the inside groove here. These Allen nuts will 100% because I experienced it myself, rub on the print lines. Unless you s manage to get it so these run straight along, these run across. Sanding that out made operation far smoother. I still get a little bit of stick, but that's due to a few things I need to sort myself. Uh, things you really don't want to sand, and the trick to how I actually managed it, the inside of the barrel port, and the absolutely, I really shouldn't have deprimed this, genius way the trigger is set. This section here actually wraps the entire way around the barrel, as you can see, sits in underneath, wraps all the way around. This little tab rests on top, and see it moving the. It's called a sear in the files. I'm not sure that it's specifically what we call it, because sears usually hold things back. This is really just a catch pusher, but eh, it's me being slightly pedantic about naming things, never mind. Insert the barrel a little, and just keep turning it. Don't tighten, don't put screw in or anything. Just 
just keep turning it until it's almost freely turning with very little effort. Do the same thing for the trigger. This resulted in the smoothest trigger pull I've had out of any 3D printed blaster so far. Aside from that, the build guide's pretty comprehensive. The few things I did a little differently were I inserted the barrel and the trigger without the spring on it, then installed the sear. Without that step, well, with the step the way it is in the build guide, I found it immensely difficult. <laughs> I was actually recording a previous video for this and attempting to install it, and I think I wasted about eight or nine minutes. I ended up scrapping the whole thing because I just got so frustrated with trying to install this damn thing that I just basically threw my camera. Uh, so yeah, installing the barrel helps it to have something to basically sit it on. For gluing the grip, I understand with ABS, I'm not exactly experienced with ABS, I've not really printed it, I find PLA to be pretty well suited for most of my needs, but I believe you can weld ABS, uh, acetone, I believe, with PLA and I would say most likely with PETG as well. Get yourself some of this. It's a rubber toughened cyanoacrylate glue. I use the Zap brand stuff just because that's what's at my local hobby store. It's in about 15, maybe 20 of my blasters right now. It is extremely useful. Uh, yeah, aside from that, all of my plunger tubes, pretty much without fail, are lubricated with silicon shock oil, silicon shock fluid. Again, local hobby store, all of mine are a 22 or a 32.5. The guide rails, or action rails, whatever you feel like calling them in this, including the central one that actually guides the plunger. 10k. I was gonna go with a 3k, but I figured that 10k is a little thicker and yeah, all that. A uh, few disclaimers before I end this out. It is PLA. The suggested build and printing and all that, you know, is in pet G. Personally, I wanted to test out this particular transparent filament. So far, the only issue I've had is the trigger guard. That's partly on me. I basically put a little pressure up on it and uh, with my thumb when attempting to close the slide in about a week ago and just blew it out. I mean, I'm fine with it, just something to watch. Uh, this is a PLA Plus, however. I get all of my, well, most of my filament from a place called 3D Phillies. I'll leave a link up for them. They're an Australian company. Absolutely have nothing but good things to say about their filament. The infill I used on this again deviates from the print guide. It says 100%. I ran 80 to 85 on most of these parts. I believe the 85 is most of the stuff that'll take, you know, an impact. It's the frame, plunger, all that. The slide ends, trigger, everything else is printed at about 80. I also print in a 0.18 millimeter layout. The guide, I believe, says 0.15. 5 or 0.12. It's been a about a week or two since I've looked at it, so I don't have exact numbers. Yeah, other than that, 
My basic thoughts on it? Uh, I freaking love this thing. <laughs> I've just been sitting there plinking targets at about 10, 15 meters, and with the long barrel hitting a 130 FPS average. I'm getting pinpoint. Like, seriously, no rifling, no scar, no any sort of tip on it to increase accuracy, and I'm hitting a moderately sized target at 10 meters with really close grouping. If you've printed the undersized mags and don't have any binding issues, they do drop free. Mine, they have some minor binding issues, but that's mostly due to my sanding. It's a smooth action. If you're used to any sort of mag and handle pistols, you'll be used to that. Feed is super smooth, it's slightly angled magazine, so again, if you're used to any sort of angled magazine, you'll be used to that. I haven't tested with the K25 yet. I'm a little wary to do so with the PLA, I'm not entirely sure how the T handle is going to hold up. For the threaded inserts, I very much recommend you borrow a soldering iron if you don't have one. It is 10,000 times easier. I don't want to think about trying to heat up a piece of metal and push them in with it. For the spring installation, uh, before I forget, slip the rod through, snap the plunger catch into the catch then screw that into the front thumb screw. Both with the kit, well, with the K25, I could barely do it, even with the 788. Fighting against that spring tension to try and slip the insert, uh, the uh, threaded rod into the thumb, yeah, thumb, yeah, uh, forward thing, that. <laughs> I've forgotten what they call it. Uh, yeah, it was a struggle, to say the least. I swore. A lot. Like, a lot, a lot. And the only other thing that I can really think of is... A lot of us, myself included, like to leave it on display with a mag in. One of the features I absolutely love about this, and I found out through attempting to put it on my shelf. That's mag stop. When your magazine is empty, you can't accidentally close it. The follower sits up in the way. So, no accidentally shutting it in the heat of battle and dry firing it. Like I said, this thing is well designed. It is well thought out. So, you don't feel like having a magazine that has no lips and it's just the base if you actually just want to use one of your functional magazines. I recommend taking a foam blank. No darts were harmed in the filming of this video. Foam blank. Slipping it in. Loading it. Shutting it. And firing. That'll sit blank eh, about halfway through. You can block it off and slip your finger off and put it all the way out. Just remember that it's in there. It allows you to release spring tension, have a magazine sitting in it, and set it up on a set of headboard. Or, you know, whatever display system you have. And you have to judge. Uh, yeah. 18 round mags work a treat. The 7-round mags and the 9-round mags, I believe, you get one of the springs provided, cut it in half, and you've got two of those mags. And we had two of the springs, so both of them were full-length ones in the 18th. I'll be experimenting with a few different types of springs, replacement ones, printable ones. Uh, if the results actually come out any good, I'll do a video on it. 
not just for this, just printable magazine springs in general for printable magazines. Uh, yeah. I suppose that's about it. I will link the hardware kit and the site itself, 118 Designs, in the description. I will leave a link for the filament, not the particular type, just the site. I recommend browsing. Thanks for watching. See you all on the field. I'll tag you all someday.